Hello there everybody, Sabata92 AK Nightmare, and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All. So, last episode... I really don't know what to think. I mean... The way that Adrian kind of broke down, and with her personality, as much as I wanted to think that she might have been the actual killer, I think she may possibly be right, possibly, about who the real killer is, possibly Matt Ungard. However, we still have to figure in that whoever the killer is, he might also be the killer too. I just don't know. The entire trial, or at least the first couple parts of that trial, were quite a rip. Roller coaster is probably not the best way to describe it. But. One, Karma got shot. Ironically, in the shoulder. How fitting. At least she's okay. And Edgeworth ended up taking her place. So it really felt like a. Tri it, as I stated before, it felt like a very triumphant return going up against Edgeworth again. He seemed like he was back in his prime, like back in his field and. Tackling things, the edge word, or at least he was tackling it. It felt like he was tackling it in a different way. Now, we have another investigation to do, though. March twenty second, five twenty four p.m. Rain Co. Law Offices. The problem is, we didn't acquit him on uh, Matt on the first day, so. What's going to happen to Maya? Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya! There, there, Pearls. I... I can't take it anymore. Look! It'll be alright! Everything may still work out. Maybe don't raise your voice in a child, but okay. The condition was that we had to get a not guilty verdict. And so far... The kidnapper has kept his word and hasn't hurt Maya. And he won't, because Mr. Ungard hasn't been given a guilty sentence yet. Uh, uh. Come on, cheer up. We don't have time to stand around crying. We have to get going. You're right. Mystic Maya is in much more pain than I am. Yes, that's right. So... Hey! You guys! Oh, glad I got you, pal! Hey, Gumshoe, how you doing? Mr. Scruffy Detective? Oh, boy. Looks like Detective Gumshoe has been dubbed Mr. Scruffy Detective in Pearl's book now. That's not bad. There's this plain old Mr. Dick Gumshoe now, and I came to talk to you, pal. Uh, oh. That's right. But we're kind of busy right now. Hey, how's it going, man? So, what are you going to do from now on? Why don't you see if you can work under Edgeworth, maybe? What do you mean, pal? Well, you've been fired, right? So, do you have a new job lined up yet? Oh, that! Uh, uh, what am I supposed to do now, pal? I don't have anything coming in at all until my next payday. What are you talking about? You don't have another payday. Well, I guess that means I'm just gonna have to work here at your place, pal. I have no issues with this. Say what? You'll be searching for things that'll prove Mr. Ungard's innocence all day, right? Well, yeah. So yeah. I'm going to help you, pal. I've got lots of experience in investigating and watching over people's places. And I'm great at making real simple meals, pal. I'll take care of it all. Come on, Mr. Nick. Let's help Mr. Scruffy Detective take care of things. Uh, uh, okay. By the way, what's your best dish? Instant noodles, pal. College man diet right there. A man after my own heart. Why am I surrounded by people who only eat cheap, unhealthy foods? Because sometimes it's all we can afford, man. 
That was the first time I've ever seen Mr. Edgeworth act like that. Never thought he'd say something like, he didn't care if Miss Andrews killed herself. He said that? That's horrible. I, 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 I don't think he really meant it though. But because of him doing that, we got the truth finally. The truth. Miss Andrews' last testimony. I wonder if that was the truth. I'll give you that there was nothing strange in her testimony itself, but I still think there's f something fundamentally wrong with the whole thing. You mean about that thing, pal? Why would she want to... <sighs> no, I mean almost need to frame Mr. Unguard. I, I couldn't figure that out from anything she said all day. What if the killer has is blackmailing her? Then... Then you're saying that testimony was a lie? Not a lie, per se. It just feels like there's more here than meets the eye. Or that's what Edgeworth would like us to believe. That's such a dirty trick. Even that woman prosecutor was better than that. Francisca von Karma. Uh, speaking of Miss von Karma, do you have any more information on her condition? Wasn't she shot this morning? Well, Miss Von Karma was shot today on the way to the trial by a pistol, pal. But, uh, but she's going to be fine, right? I mean, Edgeworth said she was in stable condition, but... Well, she was shot in the shoulder, so she's okay and still hanging in there. Okay, good. They should be done taking the bullet out, so she's probably resting at the hospital. Uh, which one? What? Are you gonna visit her, pal? No. Well, I was kinda thinking about it. She probably wouldn't like to see us anyway. Ah, hey, you've actually got a heart, don't you? But, uh, well, I mean, I may not like her, but I wouldn't want her dead, you know? She looked like she was being tortured to death not being able to go to the trial today. So maybe it'd be good for her if you went and let her whip you for a bit, pal. Uh, I'm not, no. Let's go let her whip us, Mr. Nick. No, Pearl, no. Okay, now I'm definitely not going. Um, let's see. Maybe the hospital. Oh yeah, the hottie clinic. Oh no. Oh no. That name sends a chill down my spine. Oh god, no, no. I really don't want to say hi to him again. Uh, well, I guess it can't hurt to stop by and say hi. Actually, hold on. Look at my badge! Look, it's my attorney's badge! Oh, it's a little tarnished, don't you think, pal? Oh, uh, don't worry. I'll make it all sparkly shiny again. I... I'm really touched. Oh, that's just sweet there. That, that is so nice. I like that. Keyshawn! You're playing a good game. Keep at it. Okay, uh... It'll be okay. You'll see her again, little missy. Yeah. It's really important that you don't give up. Okay. I guess a big voice really does give you a sense of presence. I, I won't give up, ever. Good on you, Gumshoe. God damn it, he's such a good guy. Oh God, okay. Uh, is she all right? After being shot, I mean. Her wound isn't that bad. Well, the gunshot wound anyway. But the wound to her pride? Now that's a different story, pal. Uh, considering how well she handles a loss, yeah, I bet this probably severely wounded her pride. The wound to her pride? Well, until now, she's always upheld the Von Karma Creed. But since she came here, well, you've given her pride quite a beating, pal. Oh. Well, I mean, she may act all grown up, but she's really still just an 18 year old. Sometimes, because of her presence and her attitude, sometimes I forget that. Quite frankly, I worry about her, pal.
I mean, she's... <sighs> Part of me thinks that because she has such a hell of a name to live up to, and I, and I mean that seriously, she's putting, like... <sighs> Part of me is afraid that at one point she is literally just going to break down. Possibly. And that's not gonna be pretty when that happens. That's the first time I've seen that side of Mr. Edgeworth, pal. Forcing people to say what he wants them to during testimony. I want to know what in the world happened to him all this time he's been gone. Yeah. <sighs> I imagine he probably went on a hell of a, a journey of self-discovery during that entire year that he was gone. I'm not a real fan of action shows or anything, but I know who Juan Carita and Matt Ungard are. Juan Carita, though, he was always desperately trying to be better than Matt Ungard. I can't believe it. Am I getting kidnapped all because of this guy? I mean, what kind of person is the real murderer anyway? I don't know. Maybe they're a big fan of Mr. Ungard? But the kidnapper's voice... He sounded like an old man to me. Ah. Probably that Matt. It's a shame that you can't re remember him, but... Oh well. I say that because he... Well, actually, no, it makes sense. We barely... We briefly had a meeting with that butler-looking guy at the ceremony, so it would make sense that we don't necessarily remember him after such a brief encounter. Anyway. My impression of her has totally changed, pal. Um, so, where is she right now? I'm sure she's being questioned down at the precinct. At the very least, about messing with the body and obstructing the investigation. And she'll probably be staying over at the detention center. <sighs> the detention center, huh? So we could probably go over there and talk to her if possible. She was Miss Adrian Andrews' mentor. Because of the suicide of the mentor she depended on, Adrian Andrews tried to follow her in an attempted suicide. Now the question is, who is Miss Andrews relying on now? That's a good question. She relies on those that have power or prestige. I mean, hell, she latched on to... It seemed like she... I, I say I, I'm probably reading a bit too far into this, but it seemed like she really did latch on to uh, Francisca von Karma. So... All right. Oh boy, we have a lot to check out here. Oh boy. Oh, fuck it, rip it off like a band-aid, let's go. Somebody please tell me that that old man is kind of locked up and we have to talk to him. Never thought I'd ever come back to this place. Um, yes, are you here to visit the patient? Mm -hmm. God damn it, why? Uh, hi. Wait a second, you're. Um, yes, I'm Director Hardy. <laughs> why are you still here? Um, yes, can I help you? I can tell me, yes. Director Hardy! Oh my god, Edgeworth. Nice female voice. Shut up. I'm not been practicing or anything. Edgeworth. Um, yes. I'm Director Hardy. Mm. Oh, you're the man from this morning. Yes. Oh, I like it, yeah. Director? Francisca. How is Francisca von Karma? Um, yeah, no need to I'm, yes. I'm in good, she's in good hands. Because you see, I personally take good care of her. Mm, yes. <laughs> Yes, and I think a surgery. Oh, it went well. You have my gratitude. Looks like Edgeworth doesn't know about this director and his secret. Yeah. She looks so pitiful. Absolutely terrifying. Yes. But I understand. Yes, her opponent was a gun after all. And when I snuck up on her real secret like she would scream really loud. Yes. I see. 
No, oh, but she's really cute too. Oh, when I do that, she whip me with her whip. <laughs> Boy, did I cry like a baby. Yes, but I think I can get used to it. <laughs> ah! Thank you. Oh, Karma! Go back to your room. Yeah, you're so mean. So mean, my frisky frisker. But that's good to yeah. Okay, okay. Yes, it's time for my IV drops. Yes. Jesus. Well, you're already up and about. And what are those tulips doing in your hands, Mr. Phoenix Wright? God, I knew I shouldn't have come here. <sighs> How are you? I was shot in front of the courthouse in my right shoulder. Literally in front of the courthouse. <laughs> but it's no big deal. This sort of thing happens all the time. What? I even had full intentions of running the trial this morning. Karma, the fuck? But, but that would have been too much for you. There's no need to act tough in front of us, you know. Regardless, I was dragged here by that man over there. He was so unyielding, one has to wonder if he was simply interested in stealing my case. It was the only logical course of action given the bullet was still lodged in your shoulder. But by taking over the case, I found myself having to clean up after you and that irresponsible deal you made. <laughs> I think I know what deal he's referring to. Oh yeah! Miss Von Karma? You made a deal with Miss Andrews yesterday, didn't you? I don't know what you mean. In order to make sure you got your guilty verdict on Mr. Ungard, you told Miss Andrews to not testify in court today. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Do you have proof that I made such a deal? Y you're denying it? It looks like you were lucky, Mr. Phoenix Wright. If I had been in court today, this trial would already be over. Yeah, I imagine. All while hiding Miss Andrews' own crime? That isn't my problem, whether she had tampered with the evidence or not. I've only one objective, to find Unguard guilty of murder. The end justifies the means, Mr. Phoenix Wright. The end justifies the means. You give a bad name to prosecutors all over. Miss Von Karma? Adrian Andrews believed you when you said, if you don't tell the truth of what really happened, then Unguard will be found guilty. And what does that have to do with me? Because of that, she's now in danger of being found guilty herself! All because she believed in your words until the very end. That still has nothing to do with me. She's just a weak person, that's all. But you had to know she was... Ow! I think visiting hours here are about over. So if you'll excuse me. What's wrong? Why'd she suddenly cut you off? Probably because she thinks I had the advantage in that argument. Probably. Edgeworth. Hey. What happened today at the trial, Edgeworth? That was not like you at all. I mean, I know you knew about Miss Andrews' condition. You could have made her testify as many times as you wanted, but to go that far. But she wouldn't testify about that until I said something. Listen, right. The courtroom is a garden of judgment. I am putting myself on the line when I stand in there. And that's why I made the witness do the same. It's only natural. I... I may not agree with the methods, but I get... I get what he's trying to say. Uh, by the way, Edgeworth, you were really angry in court today. That's rare for you. That card! Give it to me! Hurry! 
Do you have any idea what you have stupidly yet inadvertently done? This. I can't believe you hid this from me all this time. Yeah. That card. What in the world is it? Like, is it some sort of assassin symbol you recognize, or... You mean this? Listen, right. This is top secret information. You absolutely cannot leak this. Uh, okay. A special investigations team has existed for a number of years, but few know of it. Uh, I understand. Their task is to find the owner of this card. A man called Shelly the Killer. Oh my god. And just as his name states, he is a killer. An assassin. The best at that. An assassin. Shelly the Killer. Oh my god. Was placed next to the victim at the time of the murder. Miss Andrews was carrying it. I see. So who is this Shelly the Killer? The Killer is the name of a long-standing line of assassins. Long-standing? The name first appeared about a hundred years ago, I hear. Shelly is the professional name of the third heir to the Killer name. So, because his professional name is Shelly, he leaves cards the shell on them? He has a habit of making sure to leave a card by the body of his victims. It's his M.O. So, ah, I see. Why would he do something like that? Well, Pearl, there's this thing about certain serial killers or just killers in general. They, I don't know if there's some sort of problem with them, but usually some prolific serial killers like to leave a, a sort of signature. In this case, or, or, or I'm sorry, an M, or, yeah. This card being his signature. <laughs> We think it is a part of his duty to his clients. His duty? If he leaves a card, then his clients can be assured it was he who killed the victim. So somebody paid... Oh, so he was paid to kill Juan Carita. Okay. It also serves as insurance against any charges being pushed onto his clients. I see. The killer values the trust between his clients and himself above all else. It seems that this is one honorable assassin with a moral conscience. I guess that even honorable assassins can exist. So, you think this assassin... You think he's the one who did the killing in this case? It would appear that way. The discovery of the card basically confirms it, wouldn't you agree? Shelly the Killer. Okay, are we going to tell him about the situation? I noticed something at the trial today. And I knew it! I knew he picked up on it! You are behaving in a very strange manner. Is something the matter? I guess... I should just tell him. Maya. She's been kidnapped. Kidnapped?! What does the kidnapper want? An acquittal. I see. I had no idea. I will prepare a rescue team as soon as possible, and resolve this by tomorrow. But, really? Did you hear that, Mr. Nick? Mr. Edgeworth is going to- Stop trying to console me, Edgeworth. I don't need your pity. Mr. Nick? There's no way you can find her. We don't even have a single lead to go on. There's only one way to save her. I... I have to get an acquittal somehow. It's the only way. Right? Listen. You need to know something. Juan Carita was killed by Shelly the Killer. And the client who ordered the job... Is Matt Ungod. Your own client. Do you have evidence to back this up? Please, stop! I can't listen to you. I can't believe that! I see. Well, if you want to continue your investigation, you will need this. What is it?
is it? The hotel right now is restricted to police personnel only, as we are looking for any clues that might lead us to Shelley the Killer. But if you take this with you to the hotel, I'm sure they will let you enter. Receive from Edgeworth allows the bearer to freely investigate the crime scene. Thank you, Edgeworth. But seriously, the fact that Edgeworth imme- Okay, I know Phoenix said that it was something about pity, but the fact that Edgeworth was really just immediately threw that out there like, I will have a team of investigators to help find her. Seriously adds a shit ton of, like, favor points to how much I am really loving Edgeworth. It's crazy how much his person, like, how much my opinion of him has changed since his first appearance whenever I first came across the guy. He's really becoming one of my favorites. In any case, I must attend to the preparations for Maya's rescue team. We'll meet again, if anything should happen. No, if you'll excuse me. <sighs> Mr. Nick? Do you... Do you think Mr. Ungard hired an assassin? No way. I mean... He doesn't have a psych lock. Y yeah I guess not. Well, we didn't actually ask him the right question. I mean... What if... Hmm... I wonder... Maya... Please... All I ask is you make it home safe and sound. Date unknown, time unknown, location unknown. <laughs> I guess even kidnappers can be a little clumsy. Clumsy enough to drop a card like this for me. And even though he said he was an assassin, I bet he's just making that up, like how Nick does with everything in court. Anyway, let's try out the card trick with this card I just found. Sounds like I got the door to open. Okay, time to go take a look around. Well, hold on. What is this? It feels like there are a lot of glass bottles here. And these... They feel like barrels. I'll pass. Too bad I'm really hungry, and I'm really thirsty. Uh, you wouldn't want to be drinking any of that anyway, my... Just letting you know. There's all sorts of things piled up here. But it's too dark to see. Oh, boy. I've unlocked the door with this car. I should probably go and take a look around. Okay. All right, Maya, where are we? Huh? What, what is this place? I've got a feeling I'm not in the hotel anymore. Are those videos over there? Well, I'll worry about that later. For now, I should be looking for clues. That way I can show them to Sis and maybe get out of here. What the? A doggy door? And a bear? This photo... Who is that? Coffee cup. A satellite dish, a digital broadcast, a sound... That's a, that's a big TV! That's weird. What's a figurine doing on a sofa in a place like this? I think it's a bear. Aw, how cute! But it's got a lot of cuts and slits on it. Ah! I wonder if it's some kind of puzzle or something. Ugh. It's so dark in here that I can barely see, but... These kind of feel like... Videotapes. All of... I thought that was a bookshelf! That, those are all videotapes?! Just what kind of room is this? I... I thought these were books! These are all freaking... Good lord! Do you have enough? What is this thing? An antenna, I guess? And this is... a VCR? There sure are a lot of electronic gadgets here. But... What is an antenna doing here? I... uh... Wow! I've never seen...
never seen a TV this big before. Now, where's the power button? Hmm. Oh, phooey, it's busted. I would so die a happy samurai fan if I ever got to see the nickel samurai on a TV like this. <laughs> I can't believe I just made a joke about dying. All things considered. I was getting ready to say, Maya, do you not pay attention to your surroundings right now? Where you're at? Oh, hey, it's a computer. I've never really used one before. Hmm. Um, I have no idea where the power switch on this thing is. Ah, drat, there goes my plan to use this somehow to get out of here. Huh. Oh! That's a familiar face. There's a framed picture I'm seeing on this coffee table. It's a picture of a woman. She's kind of pretty. Hey, looks like something written here. Uh, let's see. I think it says, with love, Celeste. I bet this could be a clue. Yeah. Why is there a photo of Celeste in here? Uh, locked, of course. And it doesn't look like I can use the card to open this door. There's a little hole at the bottom of the door. If only I was a little skinnier, then maybe I'd be able to crawl through there. No, this simply will not do. I cannot have you wandering around at will. <laughs> it seems that your Mr. Wright is truly concerned about you. He is? For now, I would suggest you remain cooperative. If you cannot, there are ways in which I can help you. Ways? You mean... Dead men tell no tales. This is how the saying goes, correct? Dead? I'm almost certain I told you on our first meeting. I am an assassin. No way. You're lying. I mean, an assassin? People are not always who they appear to be. N Nick! Jesus! March 22nd, 7.04 p.m. Hottie Clinic Reception. Mr. Nick? Huh? Uh, oh, yes. Pearls? I got caught up in my thoughts about my situation. Mr. Edgeworth has left, you know. I guess for now I have no choice but to believe in Mr. On Guard. But I think I should listen to his story one more time. All right, let's get going too. Okay. Oh dear lord. This is the clinic's reception desk, but it doesn't look like there's anyone at the counter. On the walls this month's word of the wise. Put your best foot forward. Putting this up at a general clinic like this is... It doesn't really mean much, does it? Yeah. This patient is undergoing rehabilitation. Why do these patients staying in the same spot last time came to visit? Doesn't look like they moved any closer to the desk, huh? And this patient really doing anything is that patient really getting better? Hey, don't just cut into my monologue like that. I'm explaining things here. Yes, I... Yes, most I... Yes, I... Why are, you, why are you still here? I wonder what that door way down there leads to. How'd you know what I was thinking? There's something very peculiar about this guy because I know it's not me. Ugh. This must be the waiting area. It's got the feeling of one and there are sofas lined up, but I don't see all that many patients. Um, yes, I have a hours over this one. It's time for nightly consultations to begin. My name is... <laughs> Isn't there anyone keeping an eye on this guy? Preferably armed guards. I'm just... I'm, I'm getting out of there. Hey, buddy. Okay...
All right. I'm sorry, but visiting hours are over for today. Uh, <clears throat> too many questions I need to ask. I'm sorry, but I'm Phoenix Wright, a lawyer for one of the... You're Mr. Wright, you say. Oh, yeah, uh, there was a message here for you. A message? It's a mat on guard. Uh, here, here you are. What did he write? Is it something really important? I don't know. Well, let's see what it has to say. To Mr. Lawyer, dude. Got something really important to tell you. Why do I feel uneasy all of a sudden? Oh, Mr. Wright. So actually, I have a favor to ask of you. I have this cat named Shu. I didn't put out a lot of food when I left the house, so he's probably pretty hungry. Think you'd drop by my house and feed Shu for me, dude? My house is just a little ways down from the hotel, all right? Oh. Th this is terrible. Let's hurry. Oh, sorry. That that was a that was her saying. I thought it was Phoenix. Like cat. This is terrible. Let's hurry. We have to feed the cat. I'm sure poor Shu's stomach is growling by now. Yeah, I guess. Please feed my cat Shu. My house is a little ways down from the hotel. A client's request is a request. Guess I should go check up on his cat. I guess? Or I could go to the criminal affairs department. See how things are going on down here. Wow! Everybody looks really busy with something or another. Uh, they're probably strengthening the evidence for tomorrow's trial. Hey, hurry up! Hurry up with that, will ya? Pass that victim's list around! You gotta be kidding, there's over a hundred people on here! Um, Mr. Nick? Is Mr. Ungard really that big and bad of a criminal? <sighs> I don't know. Actually, Pearls? Uh, never mind. It sounds like they're working on a different case. This must be the chief of the detectives here! He's glued to his computer screen. What? Prosecutor Von Carter was shot in front of the courthouse? Who did it? Who shot her? I have a sneaking suspicion that even Gumshoe could do this guy's job. Thank you for bonus points to Gumshoe, goddammit! That must be one of the detectives. He's mumbling some to himself. Very well. Now why do you want to work for our company? Well, that would have to be because I feel like I would like to help this company grow. Must be doing image training for corporate interviews. This dude is always focused on his image training. Quite impressive, I must say. Blue Badger! Oh, it's kind of cute. Mr. Nick, what's the stuffed animal's name? That's the Blue Badger. It was my idea. Oh, I made it. This is the We've already gone through this. Yep. We already know what he says about that. A poster of a female police officer. Wait, no. That's the latest babes in uniform calendar. My bad. How dare they? These are the detectives' desks. There are computers and files on each one. Funny, they're a lot tidier than I expected. I guess the detectives don't spend a lot of time at their desks. They probably don't. They're probably always on the run going between scenes of the crime and other stuff, I guess. All right, here's what I want to do. Can I go to his... Well, they said it's next to the hotel, so... Hmm. I guess we'll look at the hotel lobby first, I guess. Now, Mr. Nick, let's go look for clues. You have to, for Miss Maya's sake. You shall not pass. <laughs> this old bag. Don't evaluate my, devalue my name and turning into a gasp. You spiky headed pedophile. What'd you call me? Because of you, I've been made to look like the bad guy again. Although I did get a piece of gum from Edgy Boy, as she promised. But what I really wanted was something much more viable. I wanted Edgy Poo's heart. I want it all for me. It's all your fault. You awakened the wild beast inside of this old bag. Oh my gosh, he's dead. Uh, Miss Oldman. Keep your hands off of me. This helmet is airtight. No air gets in and no air gets out. Uh, um... Uh, 
that seems like a hazard. Um... Then why do you keep putting it on? <laughs> Don't know you can get me to move with silly questions. You're going to have to defeat me if you want to get by. I'm not hearing this. Oh, boy. Um... Too early to be asking me questions, whippersnapper! Uh, looks like the only way I'm going to get any investigating done is to first do something about this kooky alien. Uh, yep. Okay, I figured as much. Okay, uh. Uh, let's see. Maybe this? Maybe if I show her this letter I got from Edgeworth. Uh, Miss Oldbag, if you would look at... What? You want me to look at this one last piece of... Angie Poo! Ugh! Is that her perfume? Pheromone d'amour, I smell... <laughs> Let's see here. Would you please allow this unsophisticated young person to conduct his investigation? Yours truly, Miles Edgeworth! Y yours truly? <laughs> that man's good at flattery. Fine, but only because Eddie Pooh said so, you understand? Letter of introduction given to Miss Oldbag. I just thought of something I have to do. Remember, no messing around. You do anything bad and I won't let you off the hook. Wait, wait I had to question you. She has strong feelings for Mr. Edgeworth. That may be, but you know nothing's going to come of it. That's so mean, Mr. Nick. Feelings are meant to be told and shared. Ow! Every time we talk about love, I always end up with a handprint on my face somehow. How the hell did she reach up and... Did she just, like, climb your body up like a monkey and then slapped you? That is her jumping power very good. Um... So, anyway, let's continue our investigation. Okay! Ah! Ah! What? What now? One little thing before I forget. You can't go into Ungar's room today. Why? The police's main investigation team is going to be in there all day, you hear? I wonder if they're the team in charge of investigating the killer. So don't go in there! Someone put it there you'll face the wrath of Wendy old bag! Okay. Jesus. It's the stage they were going to use for the post-ceremony show. After the show, there was supposed to be a press conference, but... The press conference? It was really the victim, Juan Carita, trying to disclose something about Mr. Ungard. But they're both heroes. Why would they do something so unheroic? They may look like heroes on the outside, but on the inside, they're only human. I'm sorry. Seats for the spectators of the post-ceremony show and press conference. But it's too bad neither event is going to be held now. Cameras! These cameras must belong to the press that came to cover the conference. They're all basically doing the same thing, staring at the empty stage. A lobby with a grand staircase always feels enormous. But right now, the only thing filling this enormous room is anxiety about the murder. I really hope nothing else bad happens here. Don't freaking jinx it, Phoenix! Oh, hello. March 22nd, Unguard Mansion Living Room. Unguard Mansion?! Ah, uh, sure is dark. I'll go turn on a light. But wow. So this is what a star's house looks like. Must be nice to be rich. Come on, Mr. Nick. Let's find Shoe the kitty cat. Shoe! <gasps> oh my God, it's a cat! So I guess this is Shoe. Oh, what a lovely cat! Hello, Shoe. The cat seems to like pearls. 
part of me. <laughs> you son of a bitch! You! May I help you with something, mister? Oh, uh, we're lawyers. Actually, I'm Mr. Ungard's lawyer, you son of a bitch. The masters. Then you must be right, Mr. Wright. Yes? Ah, it's a pleasure to meet your wonderful self. I'm the family butler, John Doe. Nice to meet you. Wait a minute. Hold on. There's a discrepancy here. There's already a discrepancy here. He, Matt gave us a letter to take care of his cat, but if there's a butler here, why would... There's a severe discrepancy! Also, now I know what the hell the freaking dog door is for. It's a cat door! Uh, a giant bicycle's flying through the air! Uh, that bicycle pearls is one where you don't have to pedal, and it moves on its own. Really? Wow! But sorry to disappoint you, it can't fly. Oh, that's too bad. It, I, I keep forgetting that she's blind to the outside world, so a lot of this stuff is brand new to her. Oh, there's a giant cooking earth here! That's actually a fireplace. How are they different, Mr. Nick? Uh, uh, huh. I mean, technically... Huh. Well, I guess I'm gonna go visit my mother and we're gonna go cook some soup in the fireplace now. You know, I've never actually seen a hearth before, come to think of it. You should come and visit Faye Manor, then. I'll show you one when you do. You know what? Why not? <laughs> Sounds delightful. Is that the silver... Is that... Yeah, that, that is what I think it is over there. Ah, uh, there are masks here. Yeah. And that one in the middle is the Steel Samurai. The ones next to that are... The Pink Princess and the Evil Magistrate. They fought many battles against the backdrop of Neo-Old Tokyo. Wow! You know a lot about Steel Samurai, Mr. Nick. I... Oh, I do. I don't know whether to laugh or cry that I know more about that show than a kid. That... <laughs> oh, Lord. There's another door over there. You shouldn't go wandering off over there, Mr. Nick. Yes, Pearls. Now I know how Maya feels when I tell her to stop playing around. Yeah. There's a small door at the bottom of this bigger door, Mr. Nick. I bet it's for Mr. Ungard's cat to use. Oh, you mean shoe? The door. It's locked tight. Well, I guess that's to keep nosy people like me from entering it. Yeah. It's a very comfortable and spacious lounge set. Under famous stars drop by and sit around and have a good time. In any case, I don't really belong here, do I? What is with me and in feeling inferior today? Hmm? I mean... Okay, you! You must know all sorts of things about Mr. Ungard, right? Honestly, sir, I don't believe my master is capable of such a foul deed as murder. And, uh... Anything else? No, not especially. It is not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of the master or his affairs. Ah, not typically butler-like, as it were. Also, I, I get the reference about John Doe, I get it. Mr. Doe, how long have you served at this residence? Well, sir, I would have to say... Maybe about one year. And, uh, anything else? No, not especially. It is not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of himself and his affairs. 
You know, I would have thought Mr. Ungard the kind to have a maid over a butler. He does strike that, he does, he's, he kind of strikes me as that kind of guy. That's a very cute cat you've got here. It is my duty to take care of him. The master rather fancy shoe. And uh, anything else? No, not especially. It is not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of the family cat. I was expecting him to say the same thing he's been saying, but that's different. Oh then, I guess I don't need this piece of scrap paper anymore. Matt's note crumpled into a ball and thrown away. No, you dumb fuck! I wanted to throw this at him! No! Fuck! Well, I'm afraid I must take my leave of you now. Oh, uh, we should probably get going ourselves. Oh, so young and yet already so accomplished. A master of law. But there's also a lot to be proud of in being a butler. In charge of the house of well, thank you for the compliment, sir. People are not always who they appear to be. Now, if you'll excuse me. I... No! God! Damn it! Shit! Damn it. Damn it. 